In a few days, I'm heading up to Algonquin Park for a three-night canoe camping trip with my wife, Anne. We're going to be on Lake Opiongo, and I'm bringing my camera, and I'm also planning to vlog from there, so I'm packing a lot of stuff. As I was packing up my gear, I realized that it may be valuable for other photographers who may be doing similar things to take a look at what I'm packing, how I'm squeezing all my kit into a small package, and how I'm keeping everything waterproof and safe from the elements. So let me tell you a little bit about this trip. Uh, it's three nights on Lake Opiongo, which is sort of right in the middle of Algonquin Park. And we're getting our canoe and paddles, all those things uh, from Algonquin Outfitters. The trip we have planned is an out and back. So we're doing one night at sort of the southern edge of the lake, then a nice secluded spot on Annie Bay, and then sort of returning by way of that southern part again. And that makes up our three nights. As I said, this trip that I'm taking, I plan on bringing most of my landscape photography gear, and I think I'm gonna be getting some shots. There's definitely gonna be some wildlife, which I'm a little bit interested in, uh, but then also probably I'm gonna be busy during the day paddling, you know, and doing regular camping things. So the time that I'll have left over is really like in the morning, sort of sunrise, and then also, you know, around sunset. Uh, so hopefully I'm getting some beautiful scenery of the park and maybe some moose, maybe some bear, hopefully not bear. Um, but you know, other things, um, kind of critters all around the, uh, all around the park and hopefully some beautiful scenery. I think Lake Opiongo is known a little bit for having a nice sort of fog that comes off it. Cause I think it's a fairly deep lake, uh, and it's big. So it gives off a little bit of, um, sort of mist in the morning as the temperature changes, which I hope will make a really atmospheric shots, that type of thing. I'm trying to pack every single thing that I have, my camera gear, my vlogging gear, including my tripod into one small package so that everything's nicely self-contained and I don't have to worry about like bits being smashed around and I don't have to worry about, um, you know, just having like a bunch of gear and kit all in this canoe that could go missing or could get in the way, right? It's tough to like pack it and that type of thing. So I'm just trying to bring it all down to one small size of kit. This right here is my Pelican case, which I've had for a few years, and I don't really think that I use it particularly frequently, but it's absolutely great for this because it's waterproof um, somewhat. So what that means is I think it's like up to 10 meters, maybe a little bit less, waterproof for up to 30 minutes. So it'll also float because it's gonna be filled with gear, but also air, so it's gonna float a little bit, and if for any reason the canoe tips, um, you know, I should be able to like swim and go get it and everything inside should be okay. Um, also it's just good generally to keep everything together. It's got locks, um, you know, that I can put on the side of it. Um, so I'll be able to like lock it around to a tree to make sure that nobody uh, takes off with it. Um, and also, um, you know, it sort of closes, so it protects everything from the elements and, uh, and I can have everything in there all at once without worrying about, uh, you know, having the camera out and maybe like falling into the fire or falling into some rocks or into the water, or whatever. So let's talk about my sort of gear selection for this trip. I'll be bringing my Sony a7 IV, which I'm recording on right now. And earlier this year, I got this Tamron uh, 50 to 400 millimeter lens. And I think I haven't really been using this as much as I thought I would, but I think it's gonna be absolutely the, the probably the best lens for, uh, for this particular trip, because as I said, the lake is like pretty big. And if I wanna reach all the way out and grab something kind of across the lake that's you know nicely lit by the sunrise or sunset, this is gonna be the thing to do it. Now, for my other lens choice, I've got three things that I could possibly bring. I'm gonna do some kind of wide angle, mid-range zoom, that type of thing. But right off the bat, I'm considering my uh, 14 millimeter F1.8. This thing has all sorts of advantages. It's incredibly light, it's a good wide angle. The photos that come out of this, because it's a, a G Master, it's just absolutely beautiful, the things that come out of this. Uh, but also with the F1.8, I can get some low light, maybe astrophotography, uh, if that comes up. I think, you know, this is like a very dark sky area, and if the clouds clear up and the, the sky is just right, this is gonna be great for some nighttime astrophotography, if I decide to bring it. The other option that I have is this Zeiss 16 to 35, really standard zoom range for a wide angle and can be used in all sorts of different scenarios. But this is an F4 and if I wanted to do some astro or some low light, this is not gonna help me very much. It might be if I wanna get some star trails, something like that, but generally um, you know, F4 is not greatest aperture for, uh, for astrophotography. 
The other option that I have is the 20 to 70, which is again on this camera filming me now. Uh, it's really good. It's extremely versatile. It's also very light, but it's also an F4. It doesn't go particularly wide. 20 millimeters is really, it's wide, but it's not like very, very wide angle. So it's got limited use. Although I will say if I only had one lens selection for this trip, this would be the one I would bring and I would compromise not getting the uh, sort of length of the 50 to 400 and not getting the wide angle of the 16 or the 14. I think I haven't entirely decided what to bring, but I think I can only bring two lenses, the 50 to 400 and then one other. Uh, and so if you have some ideas of what you think I should bring, or if you think maybe I should, uh, you know, pop out this uh, 50 to 400 and replace it with one of the other ones, uh, let me know. And then in the videos that I end up shooting, um, you know, you can see what I decided to bring and if I'm disappointed by it. All right, I'm gonna move on to vlogging gear. If you don't care about the vlogging gear, perfectly fine, just skip over to the next chapter. So the first thing that I plan to bring is my uh, DJI Pocket 3. This vlogging camera is so good. It's so good in low light and it's so good in all sorts of scenarios. And it comes with this great uh, battery handle, which I've actually converted into a mount. This will sort of clip onto all sorts of things that I have. And so it sort of doubles as um, a camera to use, you know, a little bit distant as opposed to just sort of handheld. But that's the first thing. Uh, the second is I'm going to be bringing my DJI Action 4. Now, I don't use this maybe as much as I should. I used to use it a little bit, but I've sort of switched up my vlogging you know, gear once the, uh, once the pocket was released. Um, but what's good about this thing, first and foremost, it's waterproof. And you know it can take a little bit of a hit. And so what I plan on doing actually is mounting this on the canoe so I can get some of those shots of us kind of like doing a little bit of action, doing a little canoeing, maybe sort of looking out at the front of the canoe, getting sort of shots like that. Um, but this is also good as a replacement for a vlogging camera if this one say doesn't work or, or something like that, you know, uh, maybe it gets damaged. And I've also got a couple spare batteries for that so I'm not gonna run out of battery and I'll be able to charge it. So this thing I can use so much. And to round out the vlogging cameras, I'm going to be bringing my iPhone 13. Now, I use that thing for all sorts of vlogging stuff. You've probably seen it behind my camera, you know, recording the back of the camera. But I also use it for other shots because it's got these three lenses on it, right? It's got a wide and a sort of mid-range and a, and a telephoto that I think is only 70 millimeters. But it's pretty good for stuff. You can also use this. The screen can, like, light up your face if you're, you know, uh, recording in the dark or something like that. It's just useful for all sorts of things. And I think the last thing that I'm gonna be bringing on my sort of vlogging electronics is this DJI Mic 2. Now, this will be the only microphone that I bring, but actually it connects to all three of the cameras that I'm gonna be bringing. And so, as long as it's not broken, you know, the battery kind of lasts forever. It doesn't take much to charge it anyways. It can record independently if it needs to be. And like I said, it can connect everything. So this thing's gonna be great. Okay, so let's move on to power. I am, um, obviously I'm gonna be using these cameras, I think quite a bit, and I've got no place to charge these things. And so actually I'm gonna be bringing this gigantic anchor battery that a friend got me for my birthday last year, thank you. Um, it has been so good. It's got a couple of USB-C, one USB-A port on there, but basically it charges things forever because uh, it's just got so many, you know, so much charge in it. And what I think I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put this thing kind of in the center of the Pelican case and then be able to charge everything um, you know, inside the case. What I don't want to do is like take stuff out, set it up on a rock somewhere and set it to charge only for it to get, you know, knocked over or broken or forgotten, you know, out in the middle of the night or something like that. And so what I want to do, set this thing up in the case with some cables around it where I can just kind of like put cables to anything that needs charging and then close the case back up and lock it so that, you know, I'm not leaving anything out exposed to the elements. So I mentioned I'm gonna to try to fit a tripod in there as well. Um, now I could keep this external, but I think it's nice to be able to have that sort of one packaged kit. And I really don't want the bulk of a gigantic tripod. I'm gonna to have to sort of move around and take care of that type of thing. So I'm opting actually for this vlogging tripod, which is extremely small. And when extended, you know, these sort of three legs extend, um, when extended, it only goes about half the height of my regular tripod, um, but I 
think I might be able to be okay with that because probably I'll like sit down to sort of get behind my camera. I do that a lot anyways. And this thing actually, you know, it's a carbon fiber tripod, so it's nice and light, but also it's quite rigid and it's got these spiked feet that um, you can really like dig into the ground if you need that to, uh, to be a little more stable. So I'm going to be bringing this. Now I have a few different ball heads for this, but this is the one that I'm going to use because A, it's got this sort of accessory clip if I need to put a light or maybe another vlogging camera on there while I'm trying to use it, uh, but also it's just a little bit versatile and I think while this thing is going to carry quite a lot of weight, if I sort of balance my camera on it just right uh, and distribute the weight properly, then this, this ball head, this tripod should work okay. I know that's like a famous last words thing, we'll see how it works. Otherwise, I'm gonna also bring this nice small um, vlogging tripod that I have, which is really good because you can set it up on the ground or um, you know you can set it up like tall or short. You can also like kind of hang it on a tree. Very versatile, uh, can be used for all sorts of things, but that's really the only vlogging tripod that I'm gonna be bringing on this trip. So everything's gonna be handheld or on top of that tripod. Hopefully that works out well. Well, other than that, it's really just cables, like USB-C lightning cables. I've got a little bit of lighting in case I do any sort of astrophotography or anything at night, but really just, you know, small bits uh, that go inside the camera kit. I'm gonna be shooting probably two episodes from Lake Opiongo. We'll see how much content I end up getting. Um, and you'll sort of get to see what kit that I chose and if any of this sort of setup went wrong. Other than that, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.